Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged, this time coming from sunny Adelaide in South Australia. It's sunny most of the time. Now this country is an amazing place. Australia is a country of an incredible contrast, amazing natural resources, amazing abundance of potential renewable energy and a government that's currently in power that is, I think it's fair to say, obsessed with coal. They even wave bits of coal at each other in the parliament, which is quite bizarre. What is happening though with this very negative attitude to renewables from the government in Australia, on the ground, amongst individuals in their houses, there's an enormous uptake of solar. There's an enormous uptake, very importantly, of batteries to store that energy when the sun isn't shining. We've all heard of the Tesla power wall. I've made a previous episode about it. That's lithium ion batteries in a big pack you stick on the wall. Now this house behind me has a lot of solar panels and it also has batteries, but these batteries are a little bit different. So Simon, thanks so much for giving me the time to see your amazing setup here. I, I, I just want to explain to people who, that when I first came here a couple of years ago, I had extreme panel envy. <laughs> Not only that, a lot more sunshine. Mm. So what, how, what, are the, what is the solar setup on your house here? Right, the setup here, there's 38 panels making um, just, in theory, just under 10 kilowatts. In practice, they get just over on a sunny day. Did you install that first and then go for the batteries or was that, did it all go in at the same time? Yeah, we've had the solar system in since about 2006 right. and the, the red batteries win in about a year ago. Have you noticed a big difference? Yeah, it's been pretty, it's been pretty obvious. We've, we've gone from, I guess, having knocked about two thirds of our power bill off originally, to having knocked off most of the remaining third wow. when we added the batteries. You know, even 20 years ago, that would have been pretty much impossible, you yeah. know, without having a diesel generator in your shed. Yeah, correct. <laughs> There's no correct. other way of doing it. And, and what we have here is effectively an off-grid capable system, but it's still on the grid. Right. And it still makes sense to leave it on because in summer, we still make more power than even the batteries can hold. So we continue to export that. Right. And it means clearly, if, as well as there, if there's high demand for power in excess of what the batteries can provide, you're always there on the grid to use it. Right. So there's a lot of merit. There's a bit of a myth that you're going to put in batteries and disconnect from the grid, be yes. all militant and go away. Yeah. Um, it's actually much smarter, I think, to stay on them. Yeah. That gives you a backup power source. It gives you, I think, over the next five years, we'll reach the point where people will be paid to be a part of the solution using their batteries, right. not just using their solar panels, yeah. to provide frequency and voltage stabilisation. So just you know, wait a little while and people will come along with software to plug into that system to, to really make the fact that you're on grid be a very positive part of the process. So the batteries are in these cases, are they? Is that where they are. So right. these enclosures hold, oh, hold right. our, wow. our lovely red flow batteries. I think I was expecting sort of a box with lots of flashing LEDs, right. you know, but this is a completely different looking thing. Right, yeah, these, these are, are flow batteries and flow batteries literally means there's fluid that flows. Right. And so these, these are, are tanks that have an electrolyte fluid in them and they flow through here. There are pumps that drive it through the electrode. So, but what's happening now then, because it's, it's sunny at the moment, yep. so there's, there's sunshine hitting your solar panels, that's mm -hmm. going through like a standard inverter like any solar panels would have. And yep. then what happens to it after that? It then comes here? Or... Right, right. We've got 10 kilowatts of conventional panels on the roof, conventional SMA inverters. Right. You can bolt this onto any existing solar system or you can add one at the same time. Right. And, and as you said, when the sun's shining, what happens is a new thing, a new thing goes on now. The sun shines, the energy runs your house. Traditionally, the surplus is exported to the grid. Yeah. Now the batteries are there as well. So now the solar energy runs the house, the surplus charges the batteries. And, the, and once they're full, the surplus surplus, if there is stuff, still goes out to the grid. The grid right. And then, wow. then when the sun sets, the reverse happens. The, the system, the, the inverter system, starts using this by preference to using the grid. Right. And so so just, use this first. Yeah, just like a rainwater tank. So, so by right. the, the sun goes down and then the energy that's gone into these during the day, the surplus you weren't using, that would have been exported, you've hung yeah. onto it. And now you are driving the house with these until either the sun comes up or if they get completely depleted, then it seamlessly uses the grid for additional energy. So you're not getting lights flickering or no, you're, right? No, no, not at all. Right. But there is that additional nice thing about having batteries. One very common misunderstanding about solar panels, if you have a power failure and you just have solar, it's useless to you, even if the sun is shining. Right. But as soon as you add batteries... Oh, is that because the inverter will go off? Yeah, I mean, the inverter's yeah. got a power supply from the mains. Right. Solar right. inverters are designed to synchronise to someone else's power and add to it. Right. They, never, they never sit in isolation. But a battery and a battery inverter, when they're there, they pretend you've to be got, a grid. You've got power in your yeah. house anyway. Yeah, so even if the, so if the grid fails, the battery, the battery system simulates the grid and your panels keep working. Right. So on a sunny day, you become an off-grid system. You can actually still be charging the batteries even, when, even if the grid's it's failed. Grid. But then, so what, what capacity do these have? Right, these are 10 kilowatt hours each. Right. And I've got 10 kilowatts of panels on the roof. Right. 
that in where we live here in Adelaide, that means on a, in a, on a nice summer's day, we'll make about 70 kilowatt hours of energy. Oh, wow. way more than the batteries yeah. can store. Yeah, right. and so, so some of that runs the house, some of it takes these to completely full, and the rest actually gets exported. Because right. a house wouldn't use 70 no, kilowatts. No, it doesn't. Like, it uses, yeah. uses maybe half that. Yeah. And in winter, it's much more balanced. In right. winter, I won't necessarily fill these completely right. um, in, in bad weather which means I'll be using a little bit more grid in winter. In summer, essentially, we're not using any grid energy at all because we have such a surplus. Yeah, God, 70 I'm yeah. just je I'm jealous again. I've got panel envy and kilowatt yeah. envy now. Well, there you go. Yeah, so, so we, we make about 30-ish 30, kilowatt hours on a typical winter's day and about 70 in summer. Right. I make about 25 on the most beautiful <laughs> cloudless day in the middle of summer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, if you imagine it, you know, which I like to do, uh, writ large, mm. so that sort of virtually every household in Australia yep. has one of these. It's completely normal. No one ever even mentions it. Correct. Of course, you've got a battery. Correct. Like you've got a front door. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah, normal. Yeah. The the impact on this country would be absolutely colossal. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's enormous. And there's, yeah. there's a couple of big things. One is that if there is a wobble in the power system, you don't mind anymore because yeah. you're resilient to, to short losses of power, and that's a big thing. Yeah. The other thing is that there is some fear mongering that exists that says that when you've put enough solar panels on roofs around the place, you're going to drive the whole grid into net negative and right. make everything unstable and nasty. Yeah. That's potentially true until you add these, right? Because these mean that you're absorbing your excess into your own house first. You, this, this substantially decreases how much you export into the grid. Right. So that, that's your solar PV. Correct. So that's what's coming off your roof. Yep. It goes into the... That's, that's the, that's the, the inverter. That's the, that's the inverter. battery inverter. The battery yep. inverter. Yep. So wait a minute. And that's the, is that the house? Yes, correct. So correct. that's what the house is using. Right. And at the moment, they're actually quite balanced, as you can see. It's a little bit overcast right now. Right. So, so the PV is making roughly what the house needs. And on the left, you've got energy, energy sources and sinks. The grid at the top left. That's the grid. Yep. And the batteries at the bottom at the left. Bottom. So at the moment, there's energy coming from the battery going into the house. To yeah. the top. There's only a, a small amount, isn't it? It's just mixing it. And yeah, a tiny correct. amount is going... Oh, there's, at the moment, there's a tiny amount coming from the grid then. There was and then a little bit six back. watts coming right. from the grid. God, right. That is amazing. So the mission, the mission of the battery control system here is to not use the grid. Is yeah. to, the mission is to have that number on the grid be zero, right. to not import and to not export. Right. And it does I the see. best it can towards that aim. Yeah. Flow batteries traditionally, as you said, are, you have big tanks and big electrodes. And also they just have fluid running down two sides of a membrane. That's what the flow bit right. means, right? That there's pumps and there's flow. Yeah. This has pumps, this has tanks, but it's quite unusual. This beastie is called a zinc bromide hybrid flow battery. Right. And it's a hybrid because it doesn't quite act like an ordinary flow battery. Right. This is actually a machine that electroplates zinc onto plastic surfaces in order to store energy. And in fact, as a machine, if you want, you can even turn it off and come back months later and turn it on, and the energy is still there. It's still, right. And when you remove energy, you're actually taking the zinc back off these plastic, back off these, right. off these plastic plates. Wow. So in this, in this electrode stack you see a 30 of these, and these plates actually have fluid running on the top and the bottom surface. Right. And when you store energy, the fluid's got is a zinc bromide fluid, and the zinc comes out of the fluid and gets plated onto this layer. So this is this when, it's, layer. when, it, so when this it's charging, when you're putting electricity yeah. into the system. Yeah, when it, right. so fluid flows down these little tracks yeah. and then flows across that surface. Right. And as it flows across, if you want to charge, you put energy in, zinc is pulled out of the solution, electrons flow through the layer, and the zinc is left behind. And that's how you store energy. This is the world's smallest flow battery. Right. As we yeah. talked about, flow batteries were traditionally much larger things. But we make the world's smallest one. And the point about that is you can put this in a house or in a small office. You don't need to have enormous container sized devices to do it. What can cause lithium to burn is just that it is so energy dense, that it's yeah. so capable. It's, it's a sprinter. You know, yes. That's what lithium batteries are good for. It's why they're so good in cars, yeah. especially high performance ones. But what you want in a house or an office is a marathon runner. You yeah. want something that just runs day in, day out at a fairly constant kind of energy flow. Mm. So this, it turns out, the fluid in these batteries, bromine is actually used to be used as a fire extinguisher. This fluid intrinsically puts fires out. Right. You know, if you, if you had a fire, you could in principle pour this fluid on it to put it out. So the, right. the thing yeah. is intrinsically fire retardant yeah. as an yeah. object. So it's not going to be the source of a fire and it's not going to amplify one. Right. The other thing about these compared to lithium batteries is that this 10 kilowatt hour battery doesn't lose capacity with age. We're all used to lithium right. batteries in our gradually cars or in our yeah. phones or yeah, gradually fading. 10 years from now, this 10 kilowatt hour battery will still be delivering 10 kilowatt hours. Right. So you don't have to oversize it up front and have it 
get a bit, get a bit yes. sad with age. So you can actually literally put 10 kilowatt hours in it, it will leave it, yep. and then you can take 10 kilowatt hours out. You're not taking slightly less than 10 Right, kilowatt that's hours. the other thing. There's, there's no reserved capacity in these batteries. They go from completely full to 100% empty. In fact, these batteries, because they are a really little electroplating machine, every time you empty them, you've actually performed a maintenance cycle. You've cleaned all the zinc off the plates right. in the act of discharging it, yeah. and now it's ready to go again. It's right. the secret to its long life. And now I'm very intrigued about all the electric fires, because right. we're in Australia, it's not exactly cold. Right, exactly. Well, we're, we're inside Redflow's development lab, so right. when we're testing these batteries, we need somewhere to put the energy. So these are literally right. just heaters. So we'll charge, we'll charge the batteries up, and then we discharge them through the heaters right. at a constant, constant energy output merely to test them. Right. The purpose of this lab is, is integration testing. It's to make sure that we can demonstrate with the equipment we have in the next room that these batteries can be plugged in easily right. in place of lithium or lead acid, connecting up to the same inverters, the same electronics that you would use in a home right. to put in any other sort of battery. So in terms of cost then, installation cost, is it, is it comparable to a, a, an equivalent kilowatt hour lithium ion? Well, it's more expensive than a lithium ion right. battery for a couple of reasons. One is it's new, right. and so we fully expect over the next couple of years for, for the cost to go down quite, right. quite, quite substantially because it's taken 10 years to develop this to, to work and to be operative, and right. now the next few years will drive the cost down. Yeah. The other thing though is that it's actually, it's got a lower total cost of ownership already. Right, it's a over, like, its, over its over life. Its life. Right. It's a little like that conversation about electric cars yeah. versus petrol ones. People recoil from the initial cost, but they don't think about the fact that the total cost of ownership is tiny. Yeah. And they get the hang of it. The same yeah. here, because it doesn't lose capacity with age. Yeah. You, don't, you, you can lose 40% of the capacity of a lithium pack over a decade of using it. You right. lose nothing out of this. Right. And it's the fact that you can drive it all every day and, and actually drag the value for money out of it. Yeah. But we think it's already better value. Right. As the upfront cost lowers, as we continue to drive volume up, it'll just get even more obviously yeah. good. So today, like, like the lovely cars we like driving around, today this is a more expensive device that does a better job. Yes. And that's how you start, is yeah. you celebrate how good that is. And then as the volume goes up, the cost... But goes you're down. making these in sort of tens rather than... Rather than thousands. Rather than thousands. Yeah, we're making, we're making so. hundreds a month, rather than right, thousands hundreds a month at the moment, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, exactly. And, and the design of this, the original design of this was very much for commercial and industrial uses, where you always have a conversation about total cost of ownership, where it's yes. a business conversation. Yeah. Having said that, when we've launched it in this home version, because it's the only home flow battery in the world, right. no one else makes one small enough to put in a home in yeah. these enclosures, um, we, we've got people really loving these things right. because they see their, their positive attributes and, and like, like the nifty Tesla cars also because they're nifty. Yeah. Because they're nifty and cool and new. Yeah. And it's the virtuous cycle. What gets new technology into the market is that 10% of the population that want to drag the new thing yeah. into the world and show their friends, yeah. just like EVs. Yeah. And as that happens, then you start the rolling stone and yeah. other people start taking it up. Simon, what is, this is a big container with stickers on, I'm impressed with the stickers. Yeah, they're lovely stickers. <laughs> so this, Robert, is what happens when you take 60 of our batteries and put wow. them in one shipping container. Wow. And the idea here is to produce enough storage to run the entire office that's behind us. Wow. For days. days really, this time. can run the whole office for yeah. days? Wow. Yeah. Can, I mean, can we have a look inside? Yeah, we that? can, absolutely. So these are the same units that you've got in your house? Yes, exactly. But just lots more exactly. of them? Exactly. So there's two in my house and there's 60 here in this container. Wow. 30 down each side. So there's 15, 15, another two on the other and side. And then the other side. Oh, yeah. I see. So that is, wait a minute, 60 is, and they're 10 kilowatt hours, that's 600, is that 600 kilowatt hours? I'm yeah, so bad is. at maths. But no, that's no, that's, that's excellent, that's excellent, you'll pass. <laughs> so 600 kilowatt hours wow. of storage, wow. you can draw energy out of this at 200 kilowatts typically, 300 kilowatts peak. Wow. So, uh, and the, the building here behind, behind us only needs about 60 or 70 kilowatts at, at peak draw typically. Right. So that's with lights, computers, yeah, people, all of it. everything. Yeah, yeah we run, we run a very energy efficient office. There's about right. 80 people in here. Right. Um, all in, across multiple, multiple companies. Yeah. And the idea of this, along with the solar panels, is it's just like a house but bigger. Yes. And so this entire facility can run for, for essentially off grid. It's, on, it's connected to the grid right. so the surplus can go out. Yeah. But there's enough energy here to run the office for two or three days, even if, even if there was no sun no at all. No sun at all, wow, which yeah. there never really is, particularly here. Yeah, it's Australia. I mean, today, it's yeah. classic. Of course, just, just to be, just, just just to be, to be nice. It's been yeah. really sunny recently. Yeah. The original flow battery concept, when flow batteries were invented, they were conceived to be this big, but as two enormous tanks yes. and one enormous electrode. So if it broke, it broke. Right. 
This is 60 little ones. Yeah. So in the same sense that Tesla do in the car, lots of little batteries, yes. we use lots of these mid-sized batteries to, right. to store energy. Right. So that's all I've got time for this week. I really want to thank Simon Hackett for letting, showing me around his amazing office and his wonderful house and the cars, pretty impressive too. It's all been amazing. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, do have a look at the Patreon link that's below this. And obviously, please subscribe. It's really nice when people subscribe. The subscriber numbers have gone up a lot. It's great. Thanks so much for watching. And as always with Fully Charged, if you have been, thank you for watching.